Hello guys, today we are going to be unboxing and setting up the Topping D90. This is a very, very famous DAC out on the marketplace, and if you want it, you better go and grab it right now because they are flying off the shelves. You won't be able to get it for much longer, especially due to the big fire that happened at AKM's main um, fabrication warehouse in Japan. So um, these are very scarce to get. So I had to um, basically um, hop on this ASAP and secure it. If you don't know who AKM are, they are a major manufacturer of lots of integrated circuit chips, such as DACs, ADCs, sensors, all types of receiver chips, etc. So this is going to affect not only the pro audio um, marketplace, but it's going to affect a lot of electronics um, for quite some time. The Topping D90 came out here um, just last year, and it is considered one of the best DACs to buy for the money. It comes in about $700, and it features the flagship AKM 4499 DAC chip, and it's very well implemented. The main reason for me um, going with Topping, I'm not used to Topping's products. I've never used Topping products, but they are highly praised in the pro audio and hi-fi world as being... Um, very well implemented devices and high performance for the dollar. There's a form, um, Audio Science Review. They're, they're pretty popular in the hi-fi world. Um, there's this one guy who used to work for Microsoft, and he has a $30,000 audio precision um, audio analyzer, which is able to um, professionally measure all types of analog signals, usually for audio devices, but you can also use it for other, um, you can also measure other types of analog signals with it, but it's mainly used for analyzing audio signals. And this device can tell you basically how good a device performs. Um, so he tested it with his um, $30,000 audio precision, and um, it is nearing the audio precision's performance. Like it's getting harder for him to test these devices because it's they're not he's not able to keep up um he's gonna have to get himself a new um, um tester anyway when we go over to audio precision we can see right here we have our main um specification dashboard from the measurements and you can see frequency he sent a one kilohertz sine wave to the dac to um spit out and the clock on this got it dead on if you can look at those number of zeros you have Next to no jitter there. That is excellent. Um, and you can see the THD plus N. If you know anything about audio, um, this is just state-of-the-art numbers, like phenomenal. You can see right here it has a cyanide of 120 decibels, and anything 120 and above is well beyond human hearing. Human hearing at best can hear about 120 decibels of dynamic range, and when you already hit 120... <laughs> You're, you're already there as far as um, what humans are capable of hearing. So this is considered a reference grade, grade DAC. And if you look on the comparison chart, you can see it falls in second place. Now you may be wondering, oh, well, what's first place? Well, first place is something that costs thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And this is in second place at 700. So it's very good um, price to performance ratio there. And we have um, excellent multi-tone where you test... Um, 32 different tones at once to see um, how well it can um, do all those tones at once. And you have um, 20 to 22 bits of um, distortion-free range. Lin he also tested the linearity, which is the precision, um, how well it um, performs at the different levels, and it's pretty um, superb there. Dynamic range is 124 decibels, well beyond 120, so that's nearly 21 bits which is excellent. Um, now jitter, jitter is fairly good. Um, now for SPDIF, um, this is where a lot of DACs fall short because um, you have to extract the, um, you have to extract the source clock from whatever is feeding the DAC. And um, this is where you can start having some jitter issues. And this is using the AK, um, let me see what it is. I think it's the 4118. Yes, so this is using the AK4118 SPDIF receiver, which is the best SPDIF receiver um, in terms of jitter. It's the lowest jitter SPDIF receiver currently out on the market. Um, however, in professional equipment, we can get these jitter levers down farther. So this is one con of this device is um, SPDIF jitter. 
um, isn't the best, but even even the highest tones, um, like the second and third harmonic distortion tones are minus 122, which is um, pretty much inaudible to humans. So it's not really an issue, it's just a, just a thing on graphs, you know what I'm saying? We like to see excellence across the graphs, even if we can't hear it, right? So um, I like to see that jitter improved, but like I said, it's at negative 122 decibels, so that's not an issue at all. But anyway, I will include the link in the description that will show um, the full um, performance um, characteristics that was tested. And as you can see, um, it basically hit it out of the park. And this is also a very versatile DAC, has lots of um, inputs and outputs available to it. So it's um, very well versed. So we are going to go ahead and do an unboxing and um, show you the device. Now, since the whole um, fire at AKM's fabrication center, these are really these are going to become really hard to get. And even when I went to buy it, um, they were out of stock, and I had to wait for them to um, get it back in stock. And they had to ship it from um, Shenzhen, China, via DHL. Luckily, because um, of the inconvenience of being out of stock, they expedited my shipping, and I was able to get it within like three days, which is. Three days coming from China to U.S., that's pretty damn fast. Usually people ship something from California and it takes a week. So um, really good job. Um, I, if you do want to buy um, a to any topping products, I do recommend buying them from Apost Audio. They're an um, authorized um, dealer here in the U.S. And um, they have warehouses all over, including China, which is where they ship mine from because they don't have them available in their U.S. warehouse. And... Um, Basically, um, they only are expecting maybe um, maybe two or three more shipments, as in like pallets full of these remaining before um, inventory gets um, pretty much um, washed out. So I was able to secure it. Luckily, I was able to put it on a credit card. I was able to secure the, the D90 and also the A90, which that will be in another video. So I'm going to go ahead and put some gloves on just because this... This came all the way from China. The um, came a long way, and the whole coronavirus and everything go on. I'm just gonna be safe. I don't have any disinfectant wipes, sadly, so I'm just gonna wear some gloves while I'm unboxing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, begin the unboxing process here. And um, like I said, this is going to be one of the best acts that um, you can buy currently out there. Of course, um, Chai Fi and Jap Fi are um, always innovating, and you give it six months and there's another DAC that blows it out of the water. A lot, a lot, a lot of competition, and we're seeing a lot of good implementations um, from several um, Chai Fi um, brands such as Topping, Fio, um, Gustard, etc. So it's it's good to see that. Um, and there, of course, there are a couple DACs that have came out that do beat this, but this is the D90 is a very um, well loved DAC, and it's only been out like a year now. And um, like I said, the performance metrics of it are astronomical along with the a90 the headphone amp that complements it astronomical performance results um, and I will be hooking this up to my um, Lynx AS 16 e as well um, which it does have that um, AS EBU input available so on the packaging you just have a plain black box this kind of reminds me of how FIO packages some of their um, products you have topping here in silver. It says high-res audio. And along the sides and bottom, it's really just um, nothing to it. Just it's black. Um, I think they, it shows something on the other side, like a QR code, but there's really nothing of interest on the box itself. So as you can see, it has a nice... Um, thick foam um, top here to protect the DAC and all the included accessories. It's very, it's a very good packaging. Um, as you can see, it has the DAC nicely in there. They have a nice cutout. This is some nice thick foam. All the accessories and a nice little um, thick foam cutout. It's it's very well laid out. I see, I, I I see A-Post Audio also included um, some disinfectant wipes, which is very nice of them. Um, and they say, long live and prosper. Good job, Apost Audio. I will be using those to wipe the, um, the DAC down when I get it out. So we have warranty card right here. Um, as typical with um, Chi-Fi, you're going to have um, 
Chinese on here, as long with, along with um, English. And in their warranty card, it seems like a brochure where they show their different products and stuff, such as a D70 and the um, DX3 Pro, etc., and their headphone amps. So here is the um, the uh, manual, user's manual. And I did get the standard version. There is an MQA version. Um, stay away from MQA. <laughs> um, that's beyond the... the topic of this video. I'm not going to really go into that, but um, I went with the standard version. Um, MQA does not need any of our support. So on the side here, the accessory um, panel, you do have a little Bluetooth antenna because this does this does include um, a built-in Bluetooth receiver if you're into that, but I'm not going to be using that. You have a, um, a USB cable and you do have an American um, connector. And this is a standard connector, so if if they didn't include one or if they gave you the wrong one, um, you're able. This is a this is a very common cable to obtain. And right here, in this nice little pouch, this is this is a very nice um, box and foam padding to keep everything. I'm very impressed. You have your remote control, so they do include that. And then you have the DAC itself. So there's the DAC unboxed. Um, it's fairly small. I'd say this is probably about maybe like a foot long, if that. Um, you have high-res audio stickers, and that's about it. So I'm going to adjust the camera view, and we'll go ahead and take a look at the stack. Okay, so I've adjusted the view. You can now see the front. We have nice um, topping right here. It says D, D90. Um, you have your on, your power button, and also your selector for your um, selecting the different sources, whether it be coax, um, ASCBU, Toslink, Bluetooth, or a USB. And you also have um, a volume up and down. And I think, well, because this does have a built-in preamp, but I think this can also be used for um, another thing as well. You do, they do have a nice little um, protector on the screen there, which I need to peel off. There we go. So that's what the screen looks like. Pretty basic and clean look. Not too much stuff going on. Like I said, this is um, just a DAC, so it's not going to... Um, have a bunch of special um, buttons and stuff on it. This does appear to have rubber feet because when I'm moving it, it does have some tension to it, which is nice. So that means it won't just slide around on your desk and stuff. On the side, you just have these nice little embezzlements, but it's pretty solid, just solid black. So here on the back is where all the fun happens. So you have your two XLR outs. Now this will go to either a professional power amplifier or a headphone amplifier, which has XLR inputs. And you also have your consumer RCA line level outs, which they put um, these little covers on them to keep dust out, but I'm going to be using that, so I need to remove these covers. I might need to get a pair of pliers because I can't grab them. Okay, so with a little help of a pair of pliers, I was able to get the covers off. They're, those are on there pretty tight, so um, which is a good thing. You don't want them just easily falling off. So they're just little covers to put over the RCA jacks. Keep dust out of them if you're not using them. But you have your two XLR outs. Um, these are going to be these are going to be professional line level. And then you're going to have your consumer RCA outs. So for amplifiers or headphone amps that use RCA, um, this will be consumer line level. And which is nice that they give you both these outputs. You can use them both at the same time, or you can switch either one on and off, which is nice. Obviously, to get best performance, if you're not using say these at the, at the current time, you can just use XLR out and you'll get better performance rather than using both at the same time. I like that they gave us both of these because um, the XLRs will be going out to my headphone amp and the RCAs will be going out to my stereo. And I can easily switch between them. Say I want to use headphones right now, boom, switch it to the headphone amp. I want to use my stereo, boom, switch it over to the stereo. It's very nice. I'm glad that they give you both of those outputs and it also gives you more options as well. You have, this is an HDMI connector, but this isn't for regular HDMI signals. This is an IIS connector. Um, it's kind of niche in audiophile um, circles, hi-fi circles. It basically allows you to send a direct digital signal straight to the DAC without going through any receivers or anything like that. Any receiver chips, I should say. Um, there's some devices that can send out an IIS signal, but it's kind of niche, but they do give that to you. I wish it would have just been HDMI instead, but... Um, it doesn't matter. I'm not using it. I'm not using HDMI. 
you have um, this is this is a this is an antenna connector for um, the Bluetooth. If you want to use the Bluetooth on this, it does have a really good Bluetooth receiver. But um, if you're going to use this as a, as a dedicated Bluetooth receiver, I'd recommend using something like an Audio Engine B1. Um, but it does have that option available. I won't be using Bluetooth because um, you know when you're getting in high end audio, Bluetooth isn't high end audio. Bluetooth's pretty crappy for the most part. Even with AppDex, it's kind of it's still lossy. You also have Toslink, um, optical in, and you have coax, SPDIF in, USB in, and they they are using an XMOS um, USB receiver, which is excellent. Although um, I won't like I, like I mentioned in my Links AS16 uh, video, I will not be using USB because um, USB has been kind of flaky for audio devices on my workstation. Um, and plus, you have to deal with drivers and stuff like that. Um, I want a DAC that's going to have AES EBU input because um, that's 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 my workflow I'm going to be moving towards, especially when I start getting into higher end um, devices such as a Pacific Microsonics or a Lavery Gold, etc. Um, so I want something that has this availability already. And as you can see right here, this is what we're going to be using. It has AES EBU input. Excellent. And another thing I like about this is it's not powered from USB. It's not powered from some crappy DC block. No, this has a built-in power transformer and a pretty damn good one at that. And this will support, um, um, it's universal as far as the input. It can do 110 all the way to 240. So if you're in US, UK, wherever you live, um, you don't have to worry about it. And it also has a nice toggle switch very nice so I'm glad that this has a dedicated um, power in and this is a very common connector uh, so that is nice we'll go ahead and um, take a look at the bottom of it so on the bottom of the unit it's pretty um, pretty basic um, you know it's the bottom it does have these really nice rubber feet um, to keep the unit from moving around and here's something that I want to note and point out this is really important it has a toggle switch on the bottom to um, set whatever voltage you use in your country. So if you're in the US, you want this to be on um, 115. So as you can see right there, there is a little switch and it already is set to 115, which is good. Um, but if you're in the UK, you wanna make sure that's set onto the 220 or 240, whatever it says. Um, but just uh, make sure that you um, set that to your right voltage. Um, just double check that it's set to the right one for your country. Because you plug it in and it's set to the wrong one, it's not going to work, and it might damage the power transformer. Who knows? But um, luckily, they did set this to 115. Since it's shipped all the way from China, I, I did want to double check that because it could have been set. It could have been kept on, you know, 220 or whatever. So it is not set on 115. So we are good to go. So that is basically just a quick unboxing of the DAC. 